Hello everybody, and here I present to you one of my favorite graphics cards that I've ever used, the 3D Labs Promedia 2V. This card released back in 1997, has a total of 8 megabytes of RAM, and shipped in a variety of bus form factors. Due to this, I had a bit of trouble with my research of this video as it was difficult to find the specific model since mine was the more uncommon PCI edition rather than the various AGP versions. But I eventually found it, and it turns out that this version of the card was released by Eontronics, which dubbed it the Picasso P2 DP335 and sold it for utilization in OEM workstations such as the Digital Personal Workstation 600 AU. Having 8 megabytes in VRAM in 1997 was actually pretty decent, and this card would have been able to perform decently in games released around that time frame. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the performance of some of those games and see just how well it holds up 23 years later. But before we get into that, I'd like to preface this by saying that I have no idea when, where, or how I got this card. The other day, I was trying to solder a capacitor to a dead motherboard, and after a few minutes, I realized that I was wasting my time. Not because it was a crappy old motherboard, which it is by the way, but because I did not have any proper AGP or PC. CI display adapters that would work with this board. So I got to look it on eBay for a cheap graphics solution to my issue, but ultimately got distracted from my work and ended up window shopping old high-end graphics cards from the 90s. Then my brain just randomly thought, hey, didn't I have a GPU that was PCI or something like that? Then I glanced to my right and saw this, the 3DFX Labs Permedia 2V sticking out of an old USPS box. To say I was excited was a bit of an understatement, I immediately sought to get it up and running on my quaternary computer. The computer in question is the Dell Inspiron 530 now back for its second time featured on this channel. In this build you'll find an Intel Q6600, 8GB of RAM, and Windows 10 running on a 7200 RPM hard drive. So yeah, the Promedia 2V is most definitely the bottleneck of the system. The installation wasn't exactly flawless though, as the bracket on the back was too long and kept wobbling around due to a missing screw. So I ended up just removing it from the back of the card and just let the VGA port rest on the chassis of the computer. Speaking of which, I'm actually surprised how good the condition of this card is. I mean, it's a bit dusty and it did only come with one screw and subsequently a very wobbly bracket, but overall, I'm just happy that it works. I mean, there's no scratches or scrapes anywhere on the card, and in my opinion, has well withstood the test of time. One thing I was surprised to find though, is that its drivers were actually still available from the internet. I figured that since it was so old, it'd be hard to locate, but no, it's right there. this card has oddly affected how my computer booted for some reason. One, which I guess isn't too odd, is that when the system boots, it would display numerous distorted Dell logos all over the screen. In addition, MSI Afterburner decided to detect the graphics integrated onto the motherboard and not the Promedia 2V. This is probably due to the incorrectly installed graphics drivers on my behalf, which I was just about to get into. When I downloaded the driver, it came with a set of instructions and a text file named README, so I read it, and followed what they said. Long story short, it just didn't work, and when using the built-in Windows feature to search for drivers in the device manager, it didn't come up with anything. So, it it could be possible that some of the games would run better if the drivers had been properly installed. Even though this card has a few problems with it, for some reason I still really like it. I don't know why, it's hardly worth its weight in dirt, but maybe the idea that I'm holding a little piece of computer hardware history in my hand is what makes me like it. But regardless, let's head into some gaming benchmarks in this system to see just how well a 23 year old 8 megabyte graphics card can perform in 2020. I didn't immediately dive into gaming benchmarks in this graphics card though, but rather started with something equally as difficult for it, running Windows. The resolution was set to 1024 by 768 and even though I could increase it, there would be severe graphical issues and I'd be forced to change it back. However, when I went to change it back, the screen would just go black and it'd end up having to restart the entire computer. When I first did this and I rebooted the computer, the Promedia 2V decided that it didn't want to output any display and gave me a minor heart attack, but after a second reboot, the car was up and running just fine. Dragging windowed applications did cause some noticeable ghosting and the typical Windows usage animations did run at a lower than usual frame rate. But still, I was able to run Windows 10 well enough, and is all I could have asked for from such an old card. As one can imagine, the selection of games that could be run on such an old piece of hardware are quite limited, but I began testing with some good old Counter-Strike 1.6. I saw on a forum that a GPU with 8MB of VRAM should be able to run the game, but the Steam page specifies a GPU with at least 16MB. Now, I'm not saying that the forum post lied, but it did, and I was unable to run the game with an acceptable frame rate. Even with all the lowest settings and a resolution set to 640x480, the average frame rate by the end of testing was 4 and the game was completely unplayable. Moral of the story, listen to Gaben. Afterwards, I ran 2001's title of Serious Sam, the first encounter on this computer. The minimum specs required for this game cited at least an Intel Pentium 2, 64 megabytes of RAM, 600 megabytes of storage space, but it does not specify any graphics card requirements. However, the recommended specs of the game do cite various 32 megabyte GPUs, so I didn't have great expectations for this benchmark and ran the game with the lowest settings and a resolution of 640 by 480. However, the game ran great and achieved the best results of today's testing with an average frame rate of 32 FPS. For some reason, during gameplay, the Q6600 processor in this computer was often running at nearly 100%, which it shouldn't have been doing. But it's whatever, and I'm just glad I got another game to run on this system. 
Following Serious Sam, I played a bit of Quake 3 Arena. The specifications required for this game cite 64 megabytes of RAM, 25 megabytes of storage space, and at most an 8 megabyte graphics card. But none of this matters since when I opened the game, it immediately struggled with its attempt to start, but was ultimately unsuccessful in doing so due to an OpenGL error most likely brought upon by the failed installation of its drivers. Another popular game from the early 2000s was Unreal Tournament. In today's testing, I'll be playing the Game of the Year edition, which, according to Steam, requires only 100% Windows 2000 slash XP slash Vista compatible computer system. So I launched the game where it automatically set all its settings to high quality with a quote unquote standard video resolution. But the intro scene of the game was quite laggy, so I toggled on the lowest settings and made the resolution 640 by 480. In actual gameplay, I mean, it wasn't unplayable, but overall it was just really bad and the experience was generally terrible. The last game I attempted to run on the system was 1994's title of Doom 2. The system requirements for this game cited Intel i486DX, 8MB of RAM, 4MB of storage space, and no graphics card. Given this, I ran it with all the highest settings and began testing. So, as expected, the game ran very well and gameplay felt smooth and concludes the gaming benchmarks performed on this graphics card. So that's the performance you'd expect from an old 8MB GPU in Windows 10 and other older gaming tasks. Also, while researching this card, I learned that a lot of these extremely old graphics cards can actually sell for decent money on the used market. And I mean, it kinda makes sense, these cards are long since obsolete and would look great in one's collection. So yeah, I need money for car insurance and probably won't have much use for an 8MB graphics card so I'll list the item for about $30 and hope for the best. Before I do that, however, I do want to get a PCIe to PCI adapter and attempt to run this card on my main desktop which has an i7-9700K, 32GB of RAM, and an RT RTX 2080 and two Mark II SSDs to perform one of the worst bottlenecks known to humankind. But hey, did you know that I upload multiple unlisted videos to this channel? Probably not, because they have basically no views, but you can find these videos in the Discord exclusives channel of the official JNEC Discord server, link in description. Regardless, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interactions with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm and I guarantee that I'll reply to your comments. While you're at it, please subscribe because it helps a lot in video quality and production and also positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day. Bye!